Could the Vancouver Canucks be on the brink of a major defensive upgrade? With the trade deadline looming, whispers in the NHL suggest that a top four defenseman could be heading our way, but it's going to cost us. As fans, we know the stakes are high and the price of a first round pick looms large in any potential deal. Stick around as we dive into the latest on this hot topic and what it might mean for our beloved Canucks. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button to stay in the loop. So, here we are, Canucks fans, with some intriguing developments on the horizon as we approach the trade deadline on March 7th. The buzz around Vancouver is palpable, particularly regarding the team's desperate need to bolster their blue line with a top four defenseman. Now, we all know that making moves in the NHL isn't cheap, and recent reports have made it abundantly clear that any acquisition will likely come at a steep price. According to David Quadrelli from Canucks Army, who analyzed past trades involving top-tier defensemen, a first-round pick seems to be the common currency. That's right, folks. In nearly every recent deal, Regardless of contract status, restricted free agents under contract, or even those who might be rentals, teams have been willing to part with that coveted first round selection. It's a bold approach, but one that suggests the high stakes of this trade market. Now let's talk about potential targets. Quadrelli has thrown out a few names that could be on Patrick Alvin's radar. Cam Fowler, Rasmus Anderson, and Marcus Pedersen. Each of these players brings a different flavor and set of risks. For instance, a deal for Cam Fowler could be a gamble due to his current contract situation. If Vancouver were to engage in talks with Anaheim, it's likely that the Ducks would need to retain some salary to make that work. Would you be comfortable with that? I have to admit, I'm a bit torn. On one hand, Adding a player like Fowler could significantly enhance our defensive depth, but the financial implications are certainly a concern. Then we have Rasmus Anderson, a player under contract until the end of the 2025 to 26 season. Quadrelli suggests that acquiring Anderson could cost the Canucks a first and a second round pick. That's a steep price, isn't it? It makes you wonder if the potential upside justifies the cost. Anderson would provide stability and skill on the blue line, but can we afford to part with that kind of draft capital? This is a question that every fan should be asking themselves. And what about Marcus Pedersen? Quadrelli believes that if the Canucks play their cards right, they could snag him for a second round pick or a B-level prospect. Maybe a younger player like Nils Hoglander could be in the mix? Now, that's a move I could get behind. Pedersen has the potential to be a solid addition to our lineup. And if we can keep our first round pick, it might just be the right path forward. With 111 days left until the trade deadline, it's clear that Alvin will be busy. The Canucks need to make a move to solidify their defense, and the urgency is building. The question on everyone's mind is, who will it be? Whether it's Fowler, Anderson, Pedersen, or someone else entirely, one thing is certain. The Canucks are looking to make a splash. Now, I want to hear from you. Do you think Vancouver should go all in for one of these defensemen? Or should they be cautious and hold on to their draft picks? It's a tough call, and I'm genuinely divided on it. What do you think? Share your thoughts and feelings in the comments below. The Vancouver Canucks made headlines recently with the Jason Dickinson trade, but let's take a moment to assess how this decision is shaping the future of our team and what it means for us, the fans. Now, Dickinson's been a solid player for the Chicago Blackhawks since they acquired him. And honestly, it's hard not to feel a little pang of regret when you see him racking up assists and goals after his stint with us. The Blackhawks got not only a player who can contribute defensively, but one who also had a career-high 22 goals last season. Meanwhile, we're left to wonder, what happened to the Dickinson that Vancouver thought they were getting? The Canucks were so eager to unload Jason Dickinson's contract that they included a second-round pick in the deal. You have to ask yourself, 
Was this trade truly a salary dump, or were they underestimating his potential? It's tough to say for sure, but seeing him thrive while we're trying to find our scoring touch raises some serious questions about our management strategy. Sure, they aim to clear cap space, but at what cost? Looking back at Dickinson's time with the Canucks, he ended up with just 11 points in the 2021-22 season, which is far from impressive, even for a defensively-minded center. However, it seems like the Blackhawks have managed to unlock something special in him that we just couldn't. His ability to contribute offensively is crucial for a team looking to build toward the future. And that's where I think we're missing the mark right now. As fans, the frustration is palpable. We've seen the potential in players like Dickinson, yet somehow they just didn't fit into our system. Now, with the Blackhawks using that second round pick to move up and snag two first round talents in the upcoming draft, it seems like they're reaping the rewards from a trade that we thought was just a salary dump. It's a bitter pill to swallow when you see how the pieces fell into place for them while we're still searching for that consistent scoring threat. And let's not forget about Riley Stillman, the player we traded away. He's already been waived by the Carolina Hurricanes after struggling to find his footing with both the Canucks and the Sabres last season. This is a clear indication that the trade might have been more beneficial for Chicago than for us. It raises a crucial question. Did we really get the best return possible for Dickinson, or did we just settle for what seemed like a necessary move at the time? Now, as we look ahead, the Canucks need to figure out how to fill the gaps that trades like this leave behind. Goals have been hard to come by for us early in the season, and the absence of a player like Dickinson, who can contribute both defensively and offensively, is being felt. Can we afford to let another player slip through our fingers like this? I for one am left feeling conflicted. On one hand, I understand the necessity of making tough decisions for salary cap relief. But on the other, it's hard to ignore the potential that players like Dickinson have once they leave our roster. You believe this was the best decision? I'm honestly torn. There's so much at stake and every decision made now will have a ripple effect on our future. So, I want to hear from you Canucks fans. What do you think about the Dickinson trade? Are we missing out on something special? What do you believe our strategy should be moving forward? I want to see your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this analysis and want to stay updated on all things Canucks, make sure to hit that like button, share this video, and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss an update. Let's keep this